What's up you guys? It's your girl Andy and welcome back to my YouTube channel. As you can see, I am driving. I'm gonna go get food. I already had my two clients of the day and I just wanna, I just wanna talk to you guys and just kinda tell you what has been happening a little update and all of that good stuff so sounds like a plan do we all agree on that let's do it so before i give you guys an update there are a lot of new people following me so if you're new hi how are you thank you for following me and let me just tell you a little bit about myself and how i got here so, I am a lash artist. <laughs> I've been lashing for like five, going on six years, and I love it. I love what I do. I'm just so grateful that I get to do this as a job, and it doesn't feel like a job. I get to lash beautiful women, and they get to walk out confident and empowered, and I get to bond with them and be a part of their day, hopefully make their day better, and I just love it. And to be honest, never did I ever imagine myself having a job like this. I have worked so many jobs, you name it, I've done it, seriously. And just never did I ever think that I would be my own boss, um, have my own business. I've thought about it, but the fact that I'm actually doing it, that is crazy. And I just, I'm really happy. When I decided to do lashes, just like anybody else, I struggled, it was a learning curve, I had to continue to practice my skill, all of that. I do have a video of talking about my lash journey and stuff like that if you want to check that out. But um, once I got the gist of lashing and the gist of my business and somewhat organized my day to day, um, I hit a plateau this was probably like well it was last year actually <laughs> i was so grateful and so successful the first couple years of my business i had endless amount of work um i worked crazy crazy amount of hours i lashed so many people um and when i finally like balanced my life a little bit better and my business I just had a plateau and I knew that I needed to do something different. I didn't know what it was. And then on top of that, I started like getting depression, if that's what you want to call it, um, mad and anxiety, crazy panic attacks. It got to the point where it was like weekly. Um, some days I felt somber, some days I felt I didn't feel. Um, and it was weird because like there was no reason to feel like that like i've gone through really really heavy things in life and like last year i didn't really go through anything crazy so i wasn't sure what where where these feelings were coming from i wasn't sure why i was feeling like this but i was and um i didn't like it i did not like that feeling at all so that and then on top of just hitting a plateau I just knew in my gut that like I had to do something. I just couldn't just continue to just do what I was doing. I didn't know, like I said, I just didn't know what I needed to do, but I knew that I had to be something different. I decided to continue my education um, even further. So I pretty much took like three, four courses that specialized in like texture and things that I, really enjoyed doing and I wanted to master, I started to really take courses in those specialties. And honestly, mostly because I enjoyed it. I love learning. Um, I love learning new things. I love challenging myself and it really kept me busy and during those rough times. And I was doing that towards the end of last year that I started to continue my education even further um, I started to really practice my skills on my clients and I really saw improvement and I was absolutely in love with my work um, 
And so getting closer to the end of the year, I finally decided like, you know what, if I'm gonna make a change, it has to be like big, drastic, and risky, honestly. That's when I met Maddie. I took one of her eBooks and I just loved how much knowledge she provided and everything about her just gave me a good feeling. And so I messaged her and um, then realized that she is in Arizona. And I didn't know that. I could have, I would always see her ads and stuff, but I never thought that she was in Arizona. And when she invited me to check out um, her coffee shop, I was um, interested because I didn't know about Lightheart or anything like that. And that's when I saw that she had an opening for a suite a couple months later. It was in, she had an opening for a suite in March. And I had messaged her in like late October. The suites in Lightheart, seriously, they rent out so fast. The fact that I even found a suite it was just crazy. Like, I didn't know how big of a deal it was back then. Now I knew, now I know that, damn, like, that was crazy. But um, I just decided, like, you know what? Why not get a studio in Scottsdale? I never really wanted to rent a studio, to be honest. Like I said, I wanted to do something different. Uh, whatever I was doing wasn't working. And I figured a new city that might be different, that might be a challenge. Um, I can bring my new skill set to a new city and really value myself and my work. Um, I mean, Scottsdale is literally like the place for beauty, seriously. So I, fe I felt like I was ready. I was ready to take on that challenge. I didn't know how I was going to get there. I didn't have like a s plan per se, but I felt like that's what I wanted to do. On top of that, what I also did is rebrand. Um, I started working on the aesthetic, the name. The name was like the long, the, it took me so long to decide on a name. All of that was happening behind the scenes last year. And, you know, as soon as I hit the new year, I announced it. I announced the rebrand, the new aesthetic, the new name. I launched a website my new my booking site was new literally everything even the way i approach my instagram the way i talk on my instagram the the things i post my interests like everything changed and honestly ever since then my mental health has been pretty good honestly it's been pretty good um not every day is amazing of course that's not realistic but it is so much better than it was last year and i want to talk about the updates i want to tell you guys what has been happening um where i'm at right now um any changes and all that good stuff but first i'm gonna order some food because i'm hungry and um that's it i don't i don't think i have to explain myself <laughs> i'm just hungry so i'm actually gonna take you guys with me to the studio and talk there about my like the update and all that good stuff mm. i hit the spot so how you doing <laughs> okay i am back in my studio okay let's get into it so six months ago i rebranded i completely changed my business my mission my goal my name my aesthetic everything but the full effect didn't happen until like march or mid-march the plan was to pay for the studio up front for five months of rent i literally had to work really hard to get all of that money up front um the beginning of the year up until march and then from there we were gonna wing it i genuinely didn't have a plan i knew that i had to build my clientele from scratch because one i was raising my prices um tremendously and two i was moving to another city now many of you guys 
think I moved from from a different state to Scottsdale to where I am now, but I didn't. I moved from one city in Arizona to another. Um, the reason why it was so dramatic and so drastic is because it's far. It's probably like about an hour away. And I think the biggest challenge on top of that was the price change. And to be honest, it was really hard to make, not to make the decision, but to pull the trigger because I didn't want to like have that conversation with my clients, honestly, because I love them to death. But I realized that I have to separate my feelings from my business. Even though I had built really great relationships with all of my clients, I still have to um, be mindful of my business and prioritize my goals and what that looks like and everything like that. It was uncomfortable for me to, I guess, like announce it and make the full change because it wasn't like any other price increase. I put in, like I said, like five trainings, four or five trainings into my new skill set, into a better service. I literally did the math and I did, I have done over 10,000 hours of lashing. That is a lot, a lot, a lot of time. But like I said, on top of that, continuing my education, bettering my skill set, all of that, I put a hold on a price increase until I made the big change. And that's why it was like scary for me to change my prices because I knew that I was going to be losing a lot of my clientele on top of moving to a new city. Like I said, it was high risk, um, but I was willing to do it. I was willing to literally completely start my clientele from scratch in a new city in hopes to m make my business better, in hopes to feel better myself, in hopes to grow and challenge myself and do things that I never thought I could do. So that was a plan. The plan was that I had no plan <laughs> besides just finding a way to build my clientele, paying rent up front for a couple months so that I didn't have to worry about it. And honestly, that was the best decision I could have made because imagine um, I am good now, right? But like not every week was good. So if I had to pay rent weekly, I would be like spiraling on some weeks and then some weeks I'd be like, I'm good. You know what I mean? So I'm really glad I paid um, up front for the rent. So yeah, like I said, that's literally the plan. I didn't think anything further than um, move, pay rent and build your clientele. So let's talk about how it ended up being. I'm still building my clientele. I'm not gonna lie, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. I'm not gonna s sit here and tell you that everything is fine and dandy when it's not, but it's not horrible either. For example, not all of my clients left. Um, majority of them did. And I, in my head, imagined all of them leaving, honestly. But the fact that a couple have stayed, it's just so awesome, honestly. Like I appreciate all of my clients, whether they stayed or not. And I wish them the best. And I know they wish me the best. And you know, it definitely helps that some have stayed with me and want to continue the journey and want to see um, me grow and still support me as a client. Like I couldn't have asked for anything more, honestly. Like I'm so grateful that they have stayed and you know who you are, so thank you. <laughs> but yeah, besides those clients who have stayed, um, I probably have a good eight clients booked um, and that are regulars that come back. It sounds like a little bit, honestly. For me, it does because I went from being super booked, not closing my books because I was so booked out you have to make an appointment like two months ahead. That's how booked I was. And now it's like I have eight clients, you know what I mean? But I'm excited because in my head, I have all of the confidence in the world that I'm going to be booked out. It's just one of those things that you have to keep hustling. You have to keep promoting yourself. You have to put yourself out there. But with time, I will be booked out especially because i am very confident in my skill i am very confident in what i can offer and um there's nobody like me at the end of the day i myself and no one can take that away from me and that's not to say that there's not 
other amazing lash artists out there there are tons of amazing lash artists out there and maybe i'm not for a specific client but maybe i am the exact person that i need for another and then on top of that you only need 30 to 40 clients to be booked for my case, I only want 30. I'm not trying to be booked out completely. I want like 75% of my books to be filled. Um, <clears throat> so I'm just looking for like 30 and I'm almost halfway. And like I said, like it doesn't sound like a lot, but for me, I'm comfortable. I'm happy. I look forward to every single one of my clients because they take their time to book with me. They take their time to get their lashes done with me. And those are the people that I'm catering to. And then just in regards to having a studio, from being home-based to having your own studio, it is very different. I have neighbors now, <laughs> um, but it's really cool. Like nobody's, nobody bothers me or makes me feel bad or, you know, has bad energy. Everybody here is really cool, really sweet. Everybody here has a very different personality and I love that. Like you can feel it in their room. Their whole aesthetic is very different. My room is very different. That's something that I wish uh, I had before because it's very lonely some as a lash artist and you know being home based was nice don't get me wrong it was really nice I was at home I didn't have to go anywhere but it's really nice coming here and and just feeling welcomed and feeling like people are on your side you know it has been hard like restarting all over but I didn't expect it to be easy you know I knew what I was getting myself into. It's just like when you're in it and you're living it and you're in the moment, it can not suck. And it's just one of those things like I wanted to take a risk and I wanted a challenge and here I am doing that, you know, and it's going to be uncomfortable. It is very uncomfortable, but I wouldn't have wanted it any other way. The Andy that you see now is a much better, much happier person than the Andy last year. Just with that, not even accomplishing my goal 100% yet, just with this so far, I don't regret my decision. Okay, let's talk about what hasn't worked. What hasn't worked is focusing on the wrong clientele. I moved here to a higher end city that um, prioritizes beauty in some way, materialistic things. Um, even though there's a lot of people here that are really cool, just the um, energy in the city like is very demanding of like, like beauty and like um, trends and stuff like that. I've been trying to cater to that culture and I realized that's not what I want to do. I realized that I want to cater to a clientele that reflect a version of myself um, and reflect my community. And I think that's what hasn't worked is that I didn't focus my energy in the right clientele. I was trying to reach people that I probably couldn't relate to. And it's not... Not that you have to absolutely relate to every single thing that your client um, does or is about, but um, you do a better job when you're on your client's side and when you're on her team and when you're there to support her. And um, it's a lot easier when you can connect with them in a different level. And if I can't connect with you in anything, it's going to make my job as a lash artist harder. Um, so I think that's what hasn't worked is like, not putting into consideration who i want as a client because honestly it's not just like i need clients like you like a lot of us are in this boat of like we're trying to build clientele and it's not like i'll take anybody it's like an interview like you're going in for an, for an interview but um it's not so much like you want me it's do i want you you know what i mean um and it, i'm saying this in the most humblest way like it goes two ways, you know what I mean? Somebody might love your work and might want to be with you and be a loyal client, but if you don't connect with them, 
um, like I said, it's going to make your job so much more harder. You're not going to be able to give your best work to that client. And honestly, I mean, I can do a little, a quick deep dive of actual things that I've done that hasn't worked. And just because it hasn't worked for me, doesn't mean that it's not going to work for somebody else. It also doesn't mean that it's not going to work at all. Maybe I just have to continue to do it and eventually there will be momentum coming. But what I've noticed that hasn't worked is I would message like 50 to 100 girls a day, offering them my services, even giving them a little like discount. And I've only received one person. For me, that's a win, but it's probably hundreds and hundreds of girls that I've messaged and I think the problem is that one, they either have already a lash artist that they're very loyal to, which I get a girl, not trying to go that route, or two, they don't open their messages because again, I'm, I'm reaching a higher end clientele. So um, maybe they're like popular on Instagram and they probably get tons of messages or um, they don't use Instagram. They're not very active on it or whatever. So that's something that hasn't been working. Another thing that hasn't been working is um, promoting your post, which is weird. I normally promote my trainings and that does really good, but in regards to clientele, not that bro, like not, it hasn't been helping. Also, just simply giving out business cards. Um, honestly, I kind of don't like doing that unless it's in a very natural um, environment or natural situation for example if i'm going to the mall and i'm just like walking up to people to give them my business card i feel very uncomfortable because uh i don't like when people do that to me when i'm just walking around you know what i mean but if i'm picking up food at the drive through or running an errand and i happen to be at a store and i happen to meet a girl that i vibe with or i really like her eyes or whatever um it's a lot more easier for me to be like hey girl and then just give her my business card so that's something that um just going out for the pure reason to give business cards hasn't worked for me i've given out pamphlets um to homes like i've mailed pamphlets of my work and everything about me really cute pamphlets but hasn't worked either i also haven't been, really been trying hard on that one as much as i should i only do about like i think i've only mailed like three three to four hundred letters it sounds like a lot but like in the course of three months that's not a lot um so i could definitely be doing more on that i feel like that might work like really good i just have to really put in more effort i've done gift cards so it's like a referral program where you um give a discount to a new client if one of your regular clients um, recommends them so they both get like a little discount that hasn't been helping either <laughs> um but you know like it's a trial and error thing and it's not like i'm going to continue to try all these all these things like it, it's not just like do all do it all you know what i mean like maybe like i said maybe one of these things will pop off and will get me um clients and stuff like that the best way that you will build clientele is by word of mouth is by somebody complimenting one of your clients lashes and getting their information from there but like i said i think my biggest challenge is my luxury services and catering to those people who are willing to pay for luxury service you know that's what hasn't worked but what has worked honestly what has worked is that i come to work and i put in eight hours every single day and i keep myself busy and i keep myself in high spirits i journal a lot i manifest a lot i speak to the universe and like i said i just have a lot of trust and confidence that that everything is going to work out the way it needs to be and if that's me failing then it needed to it needed to happen and if that's me succeeding then that needed to happen too you know like it's going to be inevitable whatever happens so like might as well just have all the confidence and the trust that it's going to be good you know i think that has really helped me is like the unknown of what could happen the unknown of the result is like 
nerve-wracking but it's exciting you know so i just try to remind myself to be in the moment and to re remember that i put myself through this and change only happens through change you know what i mean like if i don't change the things that i'm doing then my results will continue to be the same Another thing that has worked is me networking. Me being in a new city um, allows me to socialize and meet other people, other lash artists. Um, I've made I've made a lot of friends. I also found my purpose. It sounds so like cliche and like, bleh, you know what I mean? <laughs> I literally, through this journey, through this process, I've learned exactly what I want to do and that is to cater to my community and that is to break generational barriers and that is to be the best version of myself no matter what it takes like I'm no longer just like tiptoeing or hesitant I'm like straightforward let's go for it and it's exciting because ever since I hyper focused on my vision and on my goal everything my environment and um, everybody around me my energy has shifted and i literally feel like people see me now and they see they see the vision you know what i mean and it's exciting because like you're no longer just working just to work or just to survive like you're doing it for a bigger cause and a bigger reason and it motivates you you wake up every day because you're so excited to keep feeding into that goal you know what has surprised me honestly like i said this is a six month update six months ago i rebranded i changed everything and then three months ago, I moved to a completely different city. So the fact that I've accomplished so much in just six months or three months, whatever you want to call it, it's crazy. Like, I don't think I've ever accomplished this much in my entire lashing career. Obviously, like all of the years of experience, um, it was my foundation to my career and to my journey. But this year, this half year, I've made some big moves. I've opened up many doors of opportunity and I've been able to help a lot of people who are in this journey with me and don't know what they wanna do or don't know what they're doing or do know what they're doing and they just wanna be a part of my journey too. And um, it's really, really cool to be able to be a part of a community where we can all help each other and um, where we know what it's like and we all support each other moving forward honestly there's nothing planned moving forward i'm just taking it day by day and honestly that's not like me i plan so much um and i think life just taught me that you don't have to plan everything i'm not saying going to things completely blind but this year i'm winging it and this year i'm taking bigger risks than i have ever taken and i'm just going with my feeling and going with my gut and um even if decisions feel irrational i always make it work you know moving forward i think i'm just gonna keep keep doing that i'm just gonna keep winging it and keep staying positive and surrounding myself with good people who knows maybe i'll do another six month update video by the end of the year <laughs> we'll see but yeah so far so good what to expect lots of things are coming soon <laughs> for example um i'm really focusing on education i'm really excited about that i'm excited for what lash withdrawal will represent i'm excited for those who will join the journey and get to see it live happening a lot of good things are going to come out of this and it's just like a gut feeling like i don't even know how to explain it i just know like i have a really good feeling i don't know <laughs> in hindsight i'm really glad i made the decision to give myself a second chance a second opportunity to start all over because 
there has been so many times where I look back at the beginning of my journey when I first started lashing and I would see my work when I first started lashing and now I can smile and I can laugh and you know but back then oh my gosh it was so rough it was endless tears it, there was more fans on the floor than they were on the doll or on the sponges it was rough it was hard I would have breakdowns because i i wanted to do this so bad but i was not good at all and i had to go through the growing pains and like i said now in hindsight like i'm just like oh what is that you know like it's just like my growth and it's really cool to see um where you started and then where you are and the fact that i can do this again the fact that um i can say I can't wait to have that feeling of I have clients booked for a whole week. I have clients booked for the next two weeks. I'm fully booked. Like that's really, honestly, for me, that's really exciting because I remember the first time I, I felt those things. I remember the first time some just one person booked with me that was a paid client. I was so thrilled and so excited. And I remember when I booked out one whole day, like I had a whole day full of lash appointments and then I remember when I booked out a whole week of lash appointments and then two weeks like the fact that I get to do that again is cool because like if I did it once I can definitely do it again and this time I have a skill set like I, I know what I'm doing my work is there and it's just finding finding those people it's a new set of challenges and a new set of boundaries but um, like I said, I have all the confidence in the world that it's going to happen and I'm here for it Regrets, I don't have any regrets Honestly, I don't have regrets I think everything happens the way it needs to happen and um, I wasn't perfect and I'm still not perfect but um this is like what I need to go through in order for me to appreciate my journey and appreciate every stepping stone and every small win that I get. And then advice. Um, I think the only advice I would give is to believe in yourself, even when nobody else does. It's harder when nobody believes in you or when they don't see the vision or um, when they think you're probably making a bad decision but if like i said if you have a gut feeling and this is a risk you're willing to take no matter what it is um believe in yourself like if you're going to make that big decision you better go all in and dive you know don't just like tiptoe around the situation and see how it feels really be in it and really own it and like i said with myself like I'm facing the challenges and some boundaries right now, but I'm really in it and I, I'm i just appreciating that right now. I'm appreciating the moment and I'm figuring it out and I think that's the best advice I can give is just believe in yourself, have some type of plan even if you're going to wing it um, financially if you're supporting a family or even just yourself but you need to pay your bills, obviously cover that or ask for help it's literally okay to ask for help but just do it it might be hard there might be things you have to sacrifice but if it, this is a risk you're willing to take and you know that if it works you're gonna be so much better off than you not doing anything then go for it that's my update it's a long one but I just felt like I wanted to share that and I felt like it's part of you guys seeing my journey and following my journey and I don't just want to show up on social media and act like everything is cool and I got everything put together and I know what I'm doing every day when in reality I'm not probably and um, some days I wake up and I'm just like what are we doing today you know I just wanted to be raw and vulnerable and really tell you what it's like six months later or three months later, <laughs> I don't know. And I'm just looking forward to the end of the year and see what the heck life has planned for me because if it's going as good as it's going so far, I'm excited and it's just so crazy, like it's so crazy, I would have never thought 
that I'd be here today. I would have never thought that I'd be a lash artist um, owning her own business as a Latina, as a woman. Yeah, that's crazy. But yeah, that is my six month update for you. Hopefully I make another video six months from now, <laughs> who knows? But yeah, I really, really appreciate every single one of you guys who have um, joined the journey and have followed me and supported me and watched me grow. And those that are new, thank you, thank you, thank you for joining. Girl, you're in for a good one. But yeah, you guys, that is my six month update. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please continue to follow my journey. Make sure to subscribe and follow me on my socials. And I will see you on the next one. Peace.